Well, hello, people. Um, how are you doing? I just wanted to sort of do like a feed blog um, today because I have been kind of swamped and quite disturbed with what's happened in the past that I can't really rectify very much when um, I actually was put in federal custody out in the United States from um, July 2020 to April 2023. Uh, and also did a bit of county jail time in Los Angeles County Jail, um, which was a case that was basically dropped and gone federal, which was something to do with just um, threatening online communications where they started at the feds after the interview deemed me as a cyber stalker in, in the federal indictment in August of 2020, which is, which is a load of bullshit because I don't actually stalk anyone. I, I was just basically railroaded and found guilty through, you know, miscarriage of justice and the, the feds always try and put a lot of evil and vilification on myself and, you know, I tried you know, everything, and I still do everything at the moment to appeal and in the efforts to sort of exonerate myself from these uh, phony, ridiculous federal charges that I ended up still doing instead of time for, that, that does still make me feel a little bit tense, distressed, angry, vexed pissed off. It's like I want to fucking kill somebody. You can be right here. Even sometimes a prisoner, a correction officer, a police officer, because I tend to be well against them in my previous videos. A little bit about in custody and when I got out but well, in custody I was in the Metropolitan Detention Center in downtown Los Angeles um, I was brought there from the county jail and before the county jail I was picked up by both Pasadena people and the LAPD in Los Angeles. Pasadena was where I lived. And it's a city separate to Los Angeles with separate police departments on each different cases of what's called the criminal threats, which um, criminal threats is a kind of funny uh, law and it's a, it's regarded as a wobbler it really just the whole in of it is more like just sending more like an angry bashful tone where like you sort of feel like you're gonna kill someone when you're not then it was perceived as a threat and I had and I had, you know, victims complaining about this allegedly over time. Um, I don't want to go deep into exactly why. And it was the, the issue was rather complex. I could probably give you an example. Um, it wasn't really because they didn't want to go on a date. I didn't particularly feel that there was any objective for any romantic relationship. I, on one occasion, I met one woman who ran a matchmaking firm called Sync Air, based in Newport Beach. Um, and I remember going to a networking event where I would say, you know, hello, how are you doing? My name's Sam. Uh, you know, I read Cloud Connected, and um, 
And she's like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Katie, and I, I am a run of matchmaking. Well, you know, that's wonderful. I'm single. I, I do. I'm looking. And she said, look, I don't feel comfortable. Can you go away? I was like, what? You just, you just tore this out of me now. It's like, what the fuck? Why exactly would you tell me that you feel uncomfortable? I just, I'm telling you a bit about a situation where your service would be of benefit. I thought that's what matchmaking is, is, is helping people when they're single, meet, meet their fine matchmaking anyway. Well, you know, I did kind of explode a bit. With, with, a, with an email to her, but anyway, she, she just took it to the FBI, she was, cause she was just stupid. Uh, there are quite a few other cases involving another saying that they don't want to speak to me and report me just because I was trying to reach out in a friendly manner when I was mean absolutely no harm at all. I mean, none of these victims I meant any actual harm. When I contacted them in the first instance like a normal person, uh, you know... It it just it just beyond beggar's belief. It was, it was gobsmacked or flabbergasted by this experience. It's just a, and there were a few societies. Uh, when I did get the discovery um, in federal custody, I learned that the reason I was banned from a society called the Cross Campus is because a girl told them that I sent death threats when I didn't. I did not send a death threat. I said, you know, you know, fuck you, bitch, or just something like that. She, but they took it as a death threat and said, hey, we've banned sound from the from going to these societies. I was like, it just, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make sense to begin with, but when I got the discovery, it began to make philosophical sense.